Hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Kate Connick and I'm the CEO of LaunchVic. As we always do when we run our webinars and all events, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we are all meeting today. For me, it's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'd like to extend that respect to people from First Nation communities across the country who are joining us here today. We're delighted that we've had such strong registration for this event. It's our third webinar in our AgTech series, and we're very excited to be supporting the growth of the Victorian AgTech sector here in Victoria. To give some context for today, Victoria's agricultural sector is valued at around 17.8 billion. Victoria is Australia's largest agricultural producer with 15.9 billion of agricultural products produced in 2018 to 19. And our products account for 28% of all Australian food and fiber exports. It's a healthy and vibrant sector. However, our ag tech sector isn't quite so strong and healthy. It's relatively small and underdeveloped. And that's why last year we were thrilled to announce a $2.2 million partnership with Agricultural Victoria with the specific aim of boosting the number of Victorian ag tech startups and building our ag tech competencies and capabilities, because we know there are so many people who've got bright ideas in this area. What we want to do is help those people launch companies and develop our sector while contributing to our economy and creating all the flow and benefits which we know and love. Part of our partnership was running a grant round for ag tech pre-accelerators. And we uh, last month, we announced three successful recipients who are joining us here today, Farmers to Founders, Rocket Cedar, and SproutX. Through these new programs, we're hoping to see new startups and technologies come through that can help disrupt the traditional agricultural sector here in Victoria. We do recognize at Launch Vic that the word disruption can be a little uncomfortable, just as failure can also be a little uncomfortable. But as we've seen in so many sectors where startups come in and bring improvements in the ways of working, in productivity, profitability, and sustainability, there's actually a really positive side. So we certainly see disruption as a good thing. We're looking for people who are hungry to help disrupt and move our agricultural industry forward and participate in these programs. That doesn't necessarily mean going backwards and undoing things of the past, but making them better, making them more productive, more efficient, more profitable, more sustainable. So if you're if someone who's thinking about starting an ag tech startup, there's no better time. There is so much support out there, including these three wonderful programs. And we're going to hear from each of our newly funded programs today, as well as founders who've graduated from these programs. And I'm going to be inviting each person up or each team up to the stage to hear about what you can expect and see which program might be best for you. But before we start, I want to touch on housekeepings. We have a Q&A channel, which is open. Please do send through any questions you have, and I'll do my very best to moderate these. The chat channel is the best way to communicate with other attendees. I have to say, I am not keeping a close eye on the chat channel. So please, please, um, if you're interested in, um, in, in answering a question, use the Q&A panel a, a channel so <laughs> without further ado let's get started and uh we're i'm told we're starting in alphabetical order so we're going to begin with the farmers to founders team and joining us from farmers to founders is co-founder and managing director christine pitt along with graham smith the program manager and we also have daniel fishkel ceo and founder of ear trumpet so welcome. Thank you for joining us here today. We're delighted to have you. And I am going to start off by Christine asking you a question. You are the founder of Farmers to Founders. What led you to establish the organisation? Thanks, Kate. And I just wanted to express my appreciation to Launch Vic, both for the opportunity to be involved in the program, but also for this webinar to really get us started. Um, so Farmers to Founders was formed at the end of 2018. Um, and it really came out of the 20 years of experience that I'd had working in the agri-food sector, specifically with the red meat industry, but also across all of the other sectors as well. And I guess one of the things that I'd really learnt um, very well was the, the really key role that farmers themselves need to play and want to play and are able to play in the whole innovation process. So as the name implies, Farmers to Founders is very much about putting farmers at the centre of the innovation process, whether as founders themselves when it comes to new technologies 
or as strategic customers and working very closely with, with uh, ag tech founders. So that was kind of, I guess, the, the core purpose of Farmers to Founders. We've grown a lot since 2018, and I'm sure we'll have a chance to share some of those uh, learnings with the group as we go through. Absolutely well. And um, through this grant, um, you're actually offering three programs. Can you walk us through each of those three founders and what can founders expect from each one? Um, it's, yeah, it, it's not actually three programs, it's a whole pathway that we're offering. And so that's really what we think is really important for founders as they come into this space at a very early stage, which is what a pre-accelerator helps with. It's to have a, a journey that they can go on and a, a flexible journey in many ways that enables them to come in and out of the more structured program components um, when it's right for them. So with this, with this Victorian Ag Tech Pre-Accelerator Program, what we're offering is we'll start with workshops uh, where we can give people an opportunity to meet with us in person, have a chat, explore and get some sense of whether what they're thinking about might suit, um, learn more about the trends in the whole space of Ag Tech and really get them kick-started. Um, that will then take them to our Journey Starter Program, which is an online program. You can complete it in about two weeks is the ideal time. Um, and that's really about looking at their digital capability, but also introducing them to some of the key tools that we use going forward, uh, pre predominantly in the lean startup space. Next part of the, the, the journey, if you like, is our Hatch Program, which, as the name implies, is where they can hatch their idea and really validate that it's uh, solving some real problems. So the key things that they would focus on there are customers, which is producers, if they're not already a producer themselves, the competitive landscape and the market size. So that's a six week program. When they graduate from that, they are able to then go to the next stage, which is our HONE program. And that's the complete package for this pre-accelerator. In the HONE program, they're honing that idea into a real business. So we talk about you know, what's a viable business model? Uh, what are the structures they need to put in place? What's their team need to look like? And we go through what we describe as the five key pillars of business success, which I won't go into detail here. As I said, it's a pathway. We then can go on to more advanced accelerator programs, uh, our Harvest program or our Grow to Asia program, but that's outside the scope of this. I think the key thing is, as I said, it's a pathway. It's not just a program. Um, and so, if they're not ready to go straight from hatch to home, then we keep supporting them in our alumni community until they are ready to come into home. So the way we've scheduled the programs during this next two and a half years is really to give them lots of options, if you like, to come in at different points that suits them. Fantastic. And so um, I'm going to touch on um, who are your target audience? You've spoken about producers and people might assume that you're targeting farmers because of your name, but who, who are your target audience? Who, who's, who's the program right for? It's pretty yeah, broad, um, but I guess the thing that we look for when we're working with um, in our recruitment and selection process is we're really, and I think you said, you, we're looking for people who are excited about it. They, they've got big aspirations to become a very successful founder of a new ag tech venture. Um, they've got an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, they're keen to learn. Um, we talk about them being coachable in startup accelerator language. They're willing to change because sometimes their idea is not going to be the right one, but they can, they can through the process that we take them through, they can pivot and learn and change. Um, they need to be passionate about delivering value to customers. So a real customer focus is what we're looking for, um, because you can't really train that into people. We can help them hone that, but they need to be passionate about delivering value to their end customer, which as an ag tech founder is probably going to be farmers. Um, and they need to be willing to work with others and build a team. And they probably need to have some understanding of um, agri-food and fibre in Australia and technology, but um, that, that's easier to learn. Um, in terms of we work across all sectors, so they can be interested in any sector across the whole agri-food and fibre landscape in Victoria. Um, we definitely want to work, uh, their customers are going to be outside of Victoria as well. Um, we we um, will accept into the program, uh, they can be a research team, they can be student teams, they can be an individual, um, they can be a farmer, obviously, they can be an ag tech or a tech person from either 
agriculture or any other technology. So they might be someone coming from med tech or fintech wanting to come into agriculture or health tech. Um, they're all useful. Um, and then finally, I guess we, um, we have a particular interest in supporting um, female founders. So we're not exclusively female founders, but we definitely want to have a strong female founder group. Uh, we also work extensively with Indigenous founders, and so we're very keen. Um, we have some relationships in Victoria where we're already working with Indigenous entrepreneurs, so we definitely see that um, group coming in, and we have a strong focus on regional uh, entrepreneurs as well. So that was a very, sounded very broad, I know. Um, it's, it's not meant to be just like anybody, but uh, it's probably the persona, the person themselves that's most important for us rather than exactly who they are, where they come from, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Thank you. And, and certainly one of the things that I loved about Farmers to Founders was your focus and experience in working in regional areas and really supporting regional founders. And, and we certainly see that there's a huge opportunity for that. I know you've recently hired a new program manager who's based in Gippsland, but the program's designed to be delivered in a hybrid format. So could you share a little bit more with us about what someone who's thinking about applying to the program might experience as they go through these programs? Um, yes, yeah, so we, even before COVID, we always ran a hybrid type of uh, delivery model. And that I think makes our programs very accessible, even for people who are in more kind of remote areas and can't necessarily spend an entire program in a physical location, in one physical location. Um, so we always found that worked best. Um, unfortunately, during COVID, we've had to go pretty much 100% virtual, um, as I'm sure most people have. So we're pretty good at that now. We, we've, we've worked out how to make those programs as engaging as possible. Um, but we really do miss the face-to-face. -face. So we're desperate to get back to face-to-face. -face. And we're hoping now with borders open, I mean, I think COVID's still with us, uh, we'll definitely be going back to that hybrid model of both virtual and face-to-face. -face. Um, where we will run those face-to-face -face sessions, we're really going to tailor that to suit the cohorts and so they won't be in one location. Um, we're definitely forming partnerships and interested to link that with the Smart Farm Network that um, that's already in place in Victoria. We've got a relationship with the, I'll call it the drought hub. We know it's much broader than being just drought. Um, and so the location of the nodes in the drought hub, we're already in discussions in terms of being able to uh, run programs in facilities located in their, in their, within their footprint. Um, but what we found is it makes sense, whatever makes sense for the cohort is where we run the face-to-face -face components of our program. Um, they will be in both regional, mainly in regional areas, but if it makes sense to run it in Melbourne, we might run some of the face-to-face -face in Melbourne, particularly if there's an event we can link in with. Mm -hmm. um, and our last thing is that, you know, our programs are a combination of individual one-on-one, -on -one, um, which is very much tailored and flexible, or um, and then cohort based as well. So we bring people together to get that really exciting interaction with their peers. Fantastic, thank you. And I have one last question for you, Christine. I know you've got some exciting partnerships. Um, could, you, um, could you talk a little bit of that and how will particip participants be able to access and work with your partners? Yeah, so we, uh, we have lots of partnerships, too many to name here, um, both locally in Victoria, nationally, obviously, because we are a national organisation, but we're also, um, I have another business in Singapore called Grow Impact Accelerator, um, which gives us a really strong international um, partnership model that we can definitely draw on. And we have mentors, experts, investors, all the normal people that you would expect across, um, across an agri-food accelerator program that our cohort has absolute access to. We actually de design it into the program, so it's quite structured. Um, we also have good relationships across Australia with all of the main research teams in various different areas. So our cohorts, um, particularly we're encouraging them to get really strong technology platforms, not just to be superficial about what they're doing, because we know that'll give them competitive advantage. So we link them up to those appropriate research teams. And then lastly, um, we have lots of relationships with both through our own alumni, but also other programs that we run in the um, adoption space with mature ag tech companies. So they can come in as, as speakers and, um, and panellists, but also sometimes we find that the path to market for an ag tech idea might be a partnership with an existing 
ag tech business rather than somebody just going out by themselves and that becomes very um, viable for them. Excellent, thank you. Well, I want to turn my attention to Daniel, who's been waiting patiently on the sidelines. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. You've actually been through the uh, found it, farm, Founders Farmers to Founders program, um, but I'd like you to talk a little bit about the journey you've been on because becoming a founder is not necessarily always the smoothest path. When did you become a founder and what led you to Farmers to Founders? Uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I uh, appreciate it. And um, yeah, my name is Daniel Fischel. I'm from Ear Trumpet Consulting. I'm a 20 plus year uh, veteran, if you will, uh, 20 plus years into a career as a technical viticultural advisor to the wine grape industry, to the uh, <coughs> premium wine grape industry around the world. Uh, and it's a business or an, uh, a business that grew out of my PhD based research into grapevine uh, genomics. So our um, uh, you know, working in the field as an advisor, you come up with a lot of ideas, you get a chance to do a lot of um, research, uh, real world research, if you will. And, and by starting to look at some of the data, uh, we started to come up with ideas that were able to be converted more into a, uh, into a business. And so what happened was I built this, uh, this crop model, if you will, this strategy for uh, improving wine quality and reducing water use. Uh, we tested it globally uh, in I think 120 different sites in in six countries and, and found that the system lent itself from being taken out of my head and into a technology platform. Uh, and that allowed it to be able to, uh, to become a venture, uh, a scalable venture, if you will. So I was looking around for grant programs, um, funding from uh, government and so on, stumbled across Farmers to Founders. They did actually reject me a couple of times for the ideas program. Um, it was, uh, you know, knocking on the door continuously. I guess that's the, uh, the first test of resilience that you need to be a founder. And uh, eventually I was uh, accepted into the bootcamp program for, for our, our idea. Fantastic. And what, uh, what did you find from participating in the program that helped you on your journey of success? So what were the specific things that you really felt the program helped you with to, 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 to take you on that journey and, and take you where you are today? Sure, absolutely. So um, the difficulty for me was, um, uh, you know, as a scientist and as someone who was sort of uh, hand in hand with the farmers every day, it's very hard to turn around and try to become a, you know, a venture, a venture based business person. Um, my idea that we sort of we worked on the idea as it stands today is called Pedatus. It's a real time vine sensing technology, uh, plus precision crop model in a knowledge sharing ecosystem that you know, reduces uh, net water use and increases wine quality. Um, and to be able to even just make a statement like that, you know, you've got a group like Farmers to Founders to be able to come to you and say, let's go through the process here. Let's start and set the stage for you to take that science hat off and put the business hat on and, and really identify where all those holes are to fill. And there are a lot of them. Um, you know, for example, uh, Farmers to Founders, they helped us um, focus on the various stages of turning the business from a consulting business into a scalable um, technology-based business. Um, they, are, they help you to look at uh, identifying reasonable goals for the kind of customer and the number of customers you can build uh, and, the, and the, the timeline for building those. Uh, and they ask you to reflect really carefully on where the value lies um, in your product. So you've got an idea, you think that's exactly what uh, uh, is the farmer needs. Well, they make you test and retest and retest again your idea uh, until you finally understand that it's uh, what it is the customer wants and how you can uh, shift your idea and shift your focus into, into building that, uh, that business and, and taking it as we are today, we're taking it global now. Fantastic. And what did you enjoy most about participating in the program? Um, there's, a, there's a lot of good advice that comes out of it. Um, I think... Um, they work really hard with you on pitch decks. I know Christine will have another laugh right about now. I think I did 60 something and I'm still 180 short of where I'm supposed to be uh, in getting the pitch deck right, um, but it's true. Customer focus uh, is very valuable. Um, just really understanding, trying out, I, I think they've put you through all these different business models. Um, does this one fit? Does that one fit? It's, it's learning the lingo. It's learning the language of talking to investors, talking to customers, um, being real with yourself, being honest. Um, that's always fun. And, um, and then just, yeah, just, just realizing that um, there's a point where you as, a, as an individual, uh, you, you, you can't learn everything. There's a point where you're going to have to know what you don't know. 
Uh, and Farmers to Founders has a terrific network of mentors and advisors and support to help you find the right people to put in place and grow that business. And the sooner you can realize that it's better just to put someone on that task instead of trying to learn it yourself, I think the better your business is going to go. So you can literally take anybody who's got a good idea and, and programs like this will help them uh, take that idea and turn it into a, a viable uh, venture. Yeah, great, great. So couldn't have said it better. It's uh, certainly something that we're looking to encourage at Launch Vic is, is all those great ideas that are out there. And we know that they're out there and um, getting them actually out of people's brains into a viable business. So uh, we know there's there's a huge amount of opportunity through these three programs. I have one um, more question for you, Daniel. Um, sure. What's the piece of advice you wish you received um, that you should give some of the people on the line that are perhaps thinking about taking that plunge and, and setting up a startup? With permission, I'm going to give two pieces of advice. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, good. So the first piece of advice is get uncomfortable. Um, if you're such as myself, you're 20 years into your career um, and you think you're doing things just right, then COVID comes along and shakes everything up. Um, you've got to be uncomfortable. Um, selling, everybody hates selling, but selling actually becomes quite easy. Well, let's say it's not scary anymore. Um, if you love your idea, if you love what you're doing, and you know that your customer will derive genuine value from it, and it will genuinely make their life easier. So that makes selling a whole lot easier. It makes this journey easier too, because if you start thinking, I've got to sell, I've got to sell, it, it, it's panic until you realize what you're doing is you're helping someone. Uh, having their life, how their businesses grow as well as yours. Uh, the second piece of advice, obviously, is, is along a similar line. The more experience you get in your particular field, the deeper you get into that knowledge, the better your ideas, the sharper your ideas are going to become um, so that you've got, when you're a more seasoned, let's say you're on the north side of 50 like myself, um, and you've got an idea and you want to start a venture, you hear all these stories about, um, uh, you know, these, these venture, uh, you know, these, these tech uh, founders who are spending 29 hours a day in their basements, you know, building these businesses. Well, when you have a family and responsibilities and so on, you don't really have that opportunity, but you've got the idea. You want to believe in that idea and just, and just go for it. Don't panic. Um, it does feel more urgent, but that's why uh, these support groups are there. Put the right people around you and, and, and give it a go. I'm going to put my, um, uh, our idea, our website on the, in the chat, if that's okay. It's, I hope that's all right. That's our, uh, that's really? our website. go visit. It's uh, it's a beautiful technology platform. It's, it is also sponsored by a, a grant from the Victorian government from DJPR and uh, as well as a contribution from wine Australia. And um, we are putting our product saves water, improves wine quality. And um, if you have sustainability goals out there, we are seeing that everyone using it is reducing their carbon footprint in their farming uh, practices. And so you can deliver measurable sustainability goals to your customers. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Daniel. You. And I love that. Get get uncomfortable and don't panic. I think that's that should possibly be Launch Fix new tagline. So <laughs> we might have to steal that from you, but sage advice. I'm going to throw one last question to Christine, a, a quick one. When do applications open for your program? Um, so we'll be launching our first workshop on uh, the week of the 16th of May. Um, we'll have some more information on our website in terms of the location. We're just working through that at the moment. Um, and applications will be open from that date. Um, the first program will um, kick off in around August, um, July, August, sorry. Brilliant. Thank you, Christine. Well, we wish you all the best in your programming and look forward to working with you and your team to grow Victoria's ag tech sector. And Daniel, we wish you all the best in your company's growth and congratulations to what you've achieved so far. Thank Thanks, Kate. Now, there will be an opportunity to ask more questions at the end. Please, if you've got any questions, drop them into the Q&A channel um, and I will do my best to read them into the discussion. But now it is my great pleasure to welcome to the stage the Rocket Cedar Group. Joining us today, we have Emma Coth, Managing Director of Rocket Cedar, Jonathan Lacey, Program Facilitator at Rocket Cedar, and Liam Burns, CEO and founder of Altera Tech. Welcome, Emma, Jonathan, and Liam. Thank you, Kate. Thanks for having us. Absolute pleasure. Emma, Rocket Seed has been delivering an accelerator program for a few years now, and this will be your first pre-accelerator. Tell us about some of the major challenges you see amongst early stage founders and how you're hoping to address those challenges through this new program. 
Yes, yeah, so I guess, um, I mean, I'll leave it to Lee and um, to talk later about um, the specific challenges. It's, it's, it's good to hear it from the horse's mouth, if you like. But um, what we see from Rocket Cedar's perspective is, um, I guess, you know, a lack of that support. And because we run cohort, cohort based programs, which this will be, um, I think it's about um, providing a safe space to um, share some of those, you know, individual challenges with, with other, um, you know, people in the same situation in that really early stage. I guess, um, you know, one of the key issues that um, once uh, startups and, and whether it be startups or researchers who want to develop a, um, an ag tech startup specifically, uh, what um, they, once they have developed their sort of narrative and working through to MVP, which is the idea of this, um, the end of this uh, pre-accelerator program, it's accessing um, the first customer. And I guess, you know, in this program, we're really, really keen to uh, work with um, our regional partners, uh, regional producer groups, um, and uh, uh, the sort of the ag tech sector or agribusiness sector more broadly uh, to provide them with those first customers. I think Christine mentioned um, sometimes it's better to work with a larger existing business in the beginning. Um, also another, uh, I guess, uh, key challenge, uh, which Liam will talk about as, as well later on, is access to funding. Really, you know, you sort of, you, you do need that funding. You can't bootstrap forever um, to, to really uh, scale up. You need to access some funding, funding, whether that's project funding or a VC funding, Asian funding and something, that's something that we really hope to, to um, help our program participants with, even though it's a pre-accelerator and it's very early stage, um, uh, we feel that it's, it's good for them to understand what the options are. Excellent, and perfect segue to the next question as you just talked about the participants, who are they? Who are you targeting? Um, we're targeting, um, I guess there's two groups of people or three groups of people, if you like, we're, we're targeting researchers from um, all Victorian universities and other research organisations in Victoria. Uh, so researchers that, you know, are likely probably early career uh, looking at, um, you know, taking the leap into, um, you know, becoming an entrepreneur, starting up their own um, ag tech uh, business, if you like, perhaps they're looking for co-founders, um, and just really learning the, the, you know, what this startup ecosystem, the startup thing is all about. So the, the tools and so forth required to do that. Um, also, the other group is um, ag tech entrepreneurs, which, you know, can come from anywhere, really. Uh, you know, people, we're talking about innovation here. So it may be come from a, a, a farmer or producer that has a great idea for, for them, you know, they've developed it on their own farm, on their own property for their own use, but they feel that it's, you know, potentially scalable and they can share it with not only farmers um, surrounding them, but, you know, even overseas um, in other markets. So that, that would be really exciting to support someone um, to go all the way from their own farm property right through to a property in you know, South America or something like that. Um, so, and I guess the other category too is people that are just um, maybe come from another sector and um, you know, they've got that, those skills of um, you know, building, they like you know, starting companies and they're really, really interested in, in this sector. So we're, we're really keen to have them, those people on board too. So we want to bring as many people into this sector as possible and run them through these programs together. Fantastic. Now I'm going to latch on to a particular passion of mine, which is research translation, and which is your first cohort. And we were delighted to see that Rocket Cedar had partnered with Cruxes, and we've got founder of Cruxes here today, Jonathan Lacey. I should declare Jonathan and I go back through many different pathways of built former careers. Um, but Jonathan, um, I believe we've got some researchers on the line here today. Um, what are the particular challenges in taking research out of the university environment and how do you think this program is going to help that? Great question, Kate. And yeah, very, very excited to be here. We're, uh, at Cruxes, we're really excited to be partnering with LaunchVic and, and with, uh, with Rocket Cedar to deliver ag tech seeds. That, that's, that's a great point. Um, people don't necessarily go into research these days because they, they feel entrepreneurial. Um, the, the, the culture in research and the entrepreneurial culture are, are often quite different. And so that's the reason behind one of the key elements in the ag tech seeds program. 
on one hand, we want to help build really investable uh, companies here that, that can really make a difference and can really address the huge challenges that are facing food producers today. Uh, the challenges brought on by, uh, by climate change and by the need for more sustainability. Uh, but, but we also want to, um, and, and so that's, you know, that's where the research capability is really going to come in because there's some amazing research going on uh, in, in Victoria in this sector. Um, but we, we want to reduce the risk for those people of, of actually getting their ideas out into the market. And that's why a critical element uh, in our program is the idea of pairing researchers, uh, pairing innovative Victorian researchers with aspiring entrepreneurs. So in some cases, those people will form teams together and the researchers will leave the university and, and jump in with both feet uh, in, into, into an entrepreneurial uh, approach. In other cases, they might choose actually to stay within the research sector and, and, you know, and work from within that sector with, um, with, with their partners, the entrepreneurs. So to, to get back to your question, one of the big challenges that we see for researchers here is the risk profile of becoming an entrepreneur. And so that pairing, that matching is one of the ways that we, uh, that we intend to, to address that risk. Fantastic, thank you. And it's certainly a, a huge challenge, not just in the ag tech sector, but more broadly, how we, how we bring research. And we have got some phenomenal research out of our university into commercial products. So if there's any aspiring researchers on the line, please, please take this plunge. It's such an exciting world. Both Jonathan and myself have been on that journey and I think we've both firmly flipped to the, to the dark side and we're on the entrepreneurial bandwagon big time. Um, it's a very rewarding career and um, we, we, I can't encourage anyone who's in research more to get involved in, in trying to explore how you can commercialize it. So I'll get back down to off my hobby horse now and Jonathan, I'll come back to you and ask, there are two components to this program. Can you walk us through what, you, what each of those will look like? Yes, I'd love to. Um, so the, the, uh, as you said, Kate, the AgTech Seeds program has uh, two phases. So um, phase one is a series of events designed to bring together um, aspiring uh, ag tech entrepreneurs that, as, as Emma mentioned, and, and these researchers that we talked about, who might not necessarily label their work with ag tech today, but are working on technologies, working on capabilities that might have applications in ag tech. So the purpose of these this uh, phase one events are, are to bring these, these people together. So these events are about inspiration, they're about connections, and they're about ideas. So the, the way we're going to run these events is that each of these events will be based around a grand challenge in ag tech. So we'll bring in uh, major players in the ag and food sector from big companies, from government um, investors um, and uh, technology experts to kind of frame up the, the particular grand challenge and get, give an overview of it. Um, th then we'll help our aspiring entrepreneurs and our researchers um, meet one another, um, share passions, share ideas, form partnerships, um, identify trends and, and explore potential solutions to those challenges. So these events will start very soon in mid-April. And in fact, if you're interested in these events, um, go to the Rocket Seed webpage and you can actually register right now um, for our mailing list. Um, so we'll, we'll let you know when these, when these events are scheduled. There'll be a mix of online events, um, in-person events in regional areas um, and in-person events in Melbourne. And, and the idea of these phase one events is to start forming teams that might be ready to apply for phase two of the program, which is the pre-accelerator phase. So um, phase two, 12-week uh, uh, pre-accelerator. Um, it's an intensive uh, cohort-based structured facilitated program to, to help these teams um, validate, test the market for their ideas. We're aiming particularly at people who are at the very early stages of their ideas. So this whole concept of of testing these ideas with the market is particularly important. The other thing that we're going to do in phase two is actually expose our teams to all of the players in the ag tech ecosystem, from producers to equipment suppliers, investors, wholesalers, retailers, all of the people that are involved in this, in this very complex ecosystem. Um, so the, and, and the goal of phase two, of course, is to, uh, is to develop um, investable startup teams um, and uh, to, to further that theme, um, we, uh, the Ag Tech Seeds program, will also provide um, funding for teams that have participated in that phase two uh, pre-accelerator who validated problem solution fit and who need financial support to develop a prototype or a minimum viable product. 
Fantastic, thank you. And so I'm going to throw it back to Emma now. Um, Jonathan did mention some of the partnerships of, of government and universities. I think we know who, well, we, we know who the government is in Victoria. <laughs> we know who the universities are. Who are some of the other um, perhaps more corporate partners that you've got involved in this program? Um, well, I guess um, Jonathan mentioned that it's this two stage program and the first stage is, um, I guess, ideation and finding those um, partners. So I guess we, we're currently actively seeking partners at the moment. Um, so please reach out if you're interested to be part of this. Um, we work out we work sort of um, uh, with different partners for different programs, for example, our food waste and loss program, we're partnering with um, you know, Monash uh, Food Innovation and Langton Ingredients. And um, we, have, we have Woolies, um, you know, as a sponsor, AgriFutures, uh, et cetera, so Simplot. Um, so we, we're, you know, looking to design the programs um, and looking at them as four um, individual programs because two years is a long time, although, you know, it can go quickly. Um, so please do reach out. Um, I've just put the um, website link in the chat there, so um, you can you can fill out the form there or just contact me directly. My uh, email is on the um, the website, and um, you know I should say too that a really important part of our program and other people's programs um, that are that are presenting today that are part of this overall project uh, are our um, stable of mentors. So um, sorry to um, you know, play on words, those. but um, we have ag tech specific mentors um, for this program, um, which we're developing out. So again, call for um, mentors there, please contact me. But some of our existing mentors are people like Justin Webb from AgriWeb, who's located in Sydney, but his um, family farm was actually in Southwest Victoria. Um, and Matthew Pryor from Tenacious Ventures, uh, who's our founding chair, and Al Fullerton from Mandalay Ventures, who also invest in early stage uh, food and egg startups, egg tech startups. Uh, so they're a very, very important um, part of our program and we consider them as partners and part of the Rocket Cedar team. Uh, we also partnering with regional grower groups. Um, we do um, quite a bit of work with groups around Victoria like Food and Fibre Gippsland, Food and Fibre Great South Coast, um, obviously in Southwest Victoria. Um, and, you know, obviously as first customers working with um, groups like Birchip Cropping Group um, will be a very important part of this program, as well as the smart farms and the broader um, Victorian ag tech uh, regional innovation network, which I believe will be um, launched soon. Um, and also uh, an important part of partner for us is uh, Melbourne Connect and the University of Melbourne. Uh, so we're actually moving in there to a co-working space. Yes, it's not regional Victoria, um, but it, it's a hub for, um, it will be a hub for Rocket Cedar, um, the Rocket Cedar community to come in and use, you know, a hot desk for the day or whatever. We can run events out of there and, and that's where, you know, we're getting back to the in-person. Um, so, you know, when people come to town, they can come and join us and work with us or attend an event. So we're really, really looking forward to, to that um, in the short, um, you know, in a few weeks time and throughout the program. Thank you. So thank you, um, Emma and Jonathan. I'm now going to throw it to Liam, who has also been waiting patiently in, in the wings. Um, we have been um, sort of following Launch Vic, at Launch Vic your journey because you've had touch point with a few different programs, but we're here in your capacity with Rocket Cedar today. But before we ask some questions around your experience in that program, tell us a little bit about your company. What's the elevator pitch? Oh boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> so what we do, we develop a retrofit camera system that mounts to farmers' existing sprayer machines and reduces the chemistry usage on fields, for example, like herbicides, like glyphosate, by up to 90%, by only putting where it needs to go at the right place at the right time. Which, from what I read in the news, could not be more important as, as global supply chains are contracting. So hopefully you've got a very bright future ahead of yourself. But uh, I have no doubt from what I hear from, from people around the ecosystem who are also eagerly watching your company. But we're not here, unfortunately, to hear about that today. We're here to hear about your experience in Rocket Cedar. Um, I'm really interested um, about your views on the program. And in particular, um, what was something that Rocket Cedar helped you with that you wouldn't have otherwise achieved on your own? 
Um, well, we started this in a process. You know, we, we, we started, we incorporated this company in 2020 and we were, uh, one of the hard parts you can do when you're trying to pitch is get your communication right. And um, I've got a, a black belt in martial arts and the worst thing you can do is train all by yourself. You train in bad behaviors and especially when you start in your own company, you need to make sure you're not, your own biases don't kind of crawl into your pitch. And you're like, yeah, of course it sounds right. I spoke to my goldfish. No, you need feedback. Um, you, you need to get feedback on your assumptions. You need to make sure that uh, your communication is correct. Whilst it may sound correct in your eyes, it may sound correct in your husband's or your wife's eyes. To the layman or even a customer you have never interacted with, you need to make sure that they get the point quickly and then you can start delving into the, the details from there. Um, and that's where the program was incredibly helpful to really answer those questions of, hey, did you take into account this? And that's something that needs to be done every single day or literally every single day. So I'm, I'm writing down, we must always be questioning. Um, it's it's a very a very good point in questioning yourselves to make yourselves better and stronger. And you've clearly done that. Um, and you've been on an amazing trajectory. Since leaving the program, have you stayed connected with Rocket Cedar? Have you benefited from networks and connections? Uh, yes, yes, 100%. And forgive me if my network connection is a little bit, sometimes oscillate a little bit. Um, uh, we have. Um, it has been hard, obviously, to meet in person with, you know, being in Victoria I and mean, just in Australia during COVID, during the situation. It has been a little bit hard to meet face to face, but there has been some like, ongoing chats, um, um, especially uh, at events in South Australia. I was able to meet up with Emma for like, you know, the first time after the event um, and, you know, give some interesting news about our fundraise. But, yeah, 100 percent, we always try and keep in touch. Fantastic. And have you kept in touch with other cohort companies? Um, not as much as I would like to, yeah, to be it's honest. Very hard um, in these world, in this world, to be honest with you, in COVID. But it's something that that yeah. peer to peer is really important. And a big shout out to some of the Launchvic team that are working on some peer to peer programs at the moment, particularly our thirty by thirty program for for scaling founders. Um, but it, it's something that we we certainly love to see. And I know that there's a lot of effort being put in by the Rocket Cedar team to, to make that happen. I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked. Um, Daniel, uh, what's the piece of advice you'd wish you'd received when you were first considering starting an ag tech startup? So Daniel beat me to the punch already uh, on, on one of those on one of those points. Um, but the other one would be question your assumptions. Um, and this kind of goes into the point that I was going in before about getting feedback is it, it it's kind of like you're trying to get the kind of graphing you know, 64, 99.95 accuracy into what your thoughts are. Um, we perceive the world in a very particular way, but it doesn't necessarily always mean it's 100% accurate with our assumptions. So always question your assumptions and bounce them off experts in the field um, there, or even your people who are like adjacent to your customer as well. Keep asking those questions and you'll be very easily able to, uh, if anyone forces you into a corner of a particular tough question, be it an investor or an industry expert, you'll be able to answer that with confidence. Um, and that's what allow people to invest or even allow your company from a technology perspective or a customer facing perspective to do really well. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank you to Emma Jonathan as well. And um, I think you've got the message. Go to the website. You can register right now. Um, program's going to be up and running by April. So encourage you to, to explore that. We certainly love what the team is doing at Rocket Cedar. So it's now my great pleasure to, to come to the very last program that we've supported, and that's our team at Spiritex. Joining us today, we have Max Xi Zhuang, Community and Marketing Associate, and Fern Ho, CEO and founder of the Leaf Protein Company. Welcome, Maxi and Fern. So my very first question is to you, Maxi. Um, Sproutex has been around for a few years as well, like Rocket Cedar, and you would have seen quite a number of founders. When you're talking with early stage founders, what are the most common themes that they're coming to you for help with? Hi, everyone. Uh, Kate, panelists, all attendees, wonderful to be here to share our plans and collective efforts in disrupting the Victorian ag tech sector. Um, yes, Kate, to your question, 
I would say the overall theme is deal flow. And to non-startups or business owners in the room, this means the management process of offers or opportunities. Um, everything else we do is work leading up to this to make sure startups uh, can present themselves best foot forward anytime. Um, but because it's so broad, I think I will sample three areas of support that Spradix does underneath to help our audience visualize. Um, I believe uh, some of the teams previously have mentioned this, but pitch deck, pitch deck for some startups, this could be the first impression, you know, in a very limited time window. A networking event at the tram station, you know, chatting to someone and suddenly, you know, you get to pop in and say, oh, this is my moment to shine. So we want to make sure that they're confident uh, in knowing, are you communicating your solutions and traction clearly? Is there a product market fit? But most importantly, do you have, or can you show uh, that you have a sense of awareness of what's going on in the industry? Um, there's definitely the money questions that people don't like to talk in public, but it's still very important. You know, how do you calculate shares? What happens in a dilution? Uh, how do you manage a cap table? Which means, you know, who owns how much of the pie? And also, is the investment offer on the table worth giving up? X percentage of your equity, because people always think like opportunity is good. I have to take everything, right? So um, what we do is to pace them through it to see what makes more sense for you to pick up right now. But the last one is really the um, right introductions at the right time. So I think I speak for everyone that capacity management is something we can all relate to, you know? So startup life, uh, and friend would definitely be able to attest to this. It's really a self-managed journey and there's the perks of setting your own pace, but the contents you need to set it well. So founders will occasionally reach out to Sproutx and this is alumni as well uh, with a specific ask checking to see if we have a shortcut that suits their need and what we do is to cut through the noise and put them to the right people at the right time. Um, however, if all of the above sounds like a foreign language to you, do not worry. This is why we have the pre-accelerator program to show you um, the hurdles that you can expect to show up and what to do when it draws near. But um, one thing to note, though, uh, for the non-traditional participants, I mean, like outside the whole startup space, peeps in, in the chat here, um, there is a very healthy reciprocating relationship in the scene, as most founders know what the journey can be like. And if I may uh, speak for the rest of the panel today here, most of us here, uh, we, having been humbled by the unpredictable agri landscape, we can definitely vouch that agri tech sector has a very, very strong community spirit to support you through your journey. Excellent. Well said. Thank you. So um, your program is designed to engage non-traditional participants in the startup ecosystem. Can you talk a little bit about who your ideal participant is? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So um, the purpose of the program is to find untapped ideas that can be innovative solutions for every business and farmers. And what we found is a lot of times when we talk ag tech, we just look at the ag tech funnel. We assume that people already know, you know, what goes on in here. We assume they already know lingos, all the fancy startup jargon. So what we want is to reach out to the entrepreneurs who potentially simply don't know what they don't know. Um, perhaps an outline of the challenge they want to solve or at best a rough idea what the solution is but lacking experience on how to pivot. For example, if, if um, market feedback rebuffs it, I have a very cool um, background image that I'm gonna swap over now and then slide over here. <laughs> so some examples of the participants that we are looking for is say researchers within ag, you know, how can I commercialize my research findings? Is there a space where I can find other entrepreneurs to join me on my journey um, to solve this challenge? Academics, um, how can I apply what I have learned in academia into the market? Practice code outreach, what does lead generation look like and work out a product fit and build my team? There are also farm entrepreneurs. Yes, including the Collins Street farmers as well. We are all funneling you through here to solve this big challenge here, um, uh, putting, putting big ag tech forward. So for example, if I'm seeing a bottleneck within my community, how can I effectively solve this with ag tech? 
potentially while juggling the family business as well. Uh, and last but not least, we are looking for corporate R&D participants or potentially your agribusiness employee. How can I use my startup as a sandbox to tackle challenges that the corporate I work for is experiencing? Well, overall, we hope for the wider community to understand that startup methodology, even though it's a decade old, who it's kind of surprising for me that something so important and large corporates are implementing now is still so young, but we want you to know that it's a very versatile and effective toolkit uh, that you can use to transform innovative ideas to solution and to bring sustainable profit, jobs, and ultimately move the sector forward. Fantastic. And so can you tell us a little bit um, about how the program is going to be structured and delivered? Is it online? Is it in person, hybrid? Absolutely. What can people expect? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I would say hybrid, but to be honest, most of our program is online only because we want it to be accessible to people with nine to five jobs, with family, dealing with life in general right now, but also regional uh, people as well, so they can assess it easily. So uh, what's, what I think could actually be helpful for the audience today is to give a very high level explanation on um, perhaps the early stages of a startup journey, when an entrepreneur will start and where we come in, right? So to see if you, if you fit. So there's definitely, you know, the idea to a proof of concept, which is your evidence of practical, uh, practical potential. Then you have the incorporate your startup, get that sweet ABN. So, you, you know, you know, you mean business. Then you move on to your minimal viable product and validate your journey through to early sales. We're looking at the pre ABN section when we can extract all of your ideas out and help you formulate. So your question, Kate, okay, the package. We are a uh, 10 week online program, so you can expect around 20 sessions. Um, we also do one on one office hours. So to make sure that you can get full attention of our lead mentor and program manager. We do have two producer tours. Now this is the in-person section, um, which we partner with the wonderful uh, Norvik Food Hub from Melbourne University and also Marcus Oldham College. Uh, and finally, we do have bursaries, which founders can use with our accredited partners after you have incorporated the startup. Um, I say what to expect in our curriculum. I too have a slide for this. Uh, a view <laughs> a view of the agri-tech landscape, just so you can set your foot right and you know where you're starting from, like you are here on the map. Um, key skills to help you shift from research to innovation and commercialization, validation of business ideas, coach pitches, and uh, in the words of Luna Legal, learn very boring, but very crucial knowledge such as tax and legal structure, meeting other participants on the same journey potentially a co-founder, um, and a human-centered approach on juggling all of the above as a founder with life admin and responsibilities outside your workspace. So quick wrap, wrap up, essentially a very succinct crash course for students with uni studies, corporate employees with nine to five schedules, or really just anyone managing life in general now. We aim to make this as easy for you as possible. Excellent, thank you. And Maxi, can I ask you to very quickly summarize who are some of your key partners in the program? For sure. So uh, as mentioned earlier, we are proudly partnered with the Norvik Food of, of Uni of Melbourne. I can see Lisa Verrill in the chat today. Uh, Marcus Odom College, these are the people, the best of what education and research sector has to offer for Ag in Victoria. Um, we work closely with them for our producer tours where we provide opportunity for program participants to, you know, soundboard, mingle, get feedback from primary producers, and also just do tours, have a look around the farm sites. Um, we do also have uh, Findex, uh, Sproutex's parent company, the leading financial accounting advisory term. So they service more than 14,000 agribusinesses um, across ANZ. Uh, definitely have to mention Bayer Crop Science, our wonderful premier sponsor, whom we and our portfolio work together to drive digital uh, transformation in agriculture. We have Luna Legal, Sandy Ledger, probably names that you know, but these are really, uh, they're subject matter experts specifically for startups. 
um, and also our key and accredited partners that has supported uh, Sporadic since day one. So I know there's a lot, uh, there's still a lot of partners I haven't mentioned. They're all on our website, but what you can expect to see in the program uh, are industry experts from government, corporate, VC, ag tech founders, our mentors, of course, large agribusinesses, so you understand what's the corporate side of things look like, grant advisory, all the different players in the ag tech field you can expect to engage with throughout your founder life. Um, but last but not least, we also have a life coach to help you support in pulling all of this together and remind yourself that, you know, there, there's definitely a large pool of people to support your journey. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Now, final, our final speaker to, to introduce herself is Fern. And thank you for waiting patiently, Fern. You've actually participated in both Rocket Cedar and, and Sproutex under uh, the Leaf Protein Company. But I'm only going to ask you about your Sproutex experience. But perhaps before we get going, tell us in 30 seconds, who is the Leaf Protein Company? Uh, so the Leaf Protein Company is a plant protein ingredient company that's unlocking Earth's most abundant source of protein, uh, which is found in green leaves. So, um, yes, I was fortunate enough. Hopefully that was 30 seconds. That's very quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I was fortunate to be in both programs. Um, and it, it was good because they sort of aligned with the different stages of the journey of the Leaf Protein Co. Um, when I got into the Sproutex program in the second half of last year, we'd already sort of gone through the validation of the market need. Um, and at that stage, I'd stepped up into a CEO position. So my focus by then was really about developing our business model and the operational aspects. Um, but not having come from either a food tech or ag tech um, background or industry, um, my network was sort of somewhat limited. Um, and this is what really Sproutex uh, helped with. Um, in particular, I mean, they've actually helped introduce us to our primary um, source of leaf protein at the moment. So Sweet Potato Australia, uh, they produce over, I think, 80 or 90% of the sweet potatoes here. And it was through one of the other founders in the Sproutex program that helped to make the connection. Um, so yeah, it, it's, I think as um, Liam and the others have mentioned, it's, it's not just what you get in the formal program, but it's the connections with the other startups in the program that really help. Yeah, absolutely. And you've been quite a, on quite a trajectory since you've completed the program, including international expansion. How has Spadax been able to help you on that journey? Yeah, I think um, one of the big learnings from Sproutex is around building the confidence in selling the leaf protein. Um, and I suppose as I've been able to build that confidence in terms of selling leaf protein to investors um, through actually some of the mentor fireside chats. So um, we've recently had investment from an international um, VC, Big Idea Ventures, um, and it was their founder um, that was introduced to me through one of the Sproutex mentor fireside chats um, and he was um, he obviously liked the pitch and wanted to connect and yeah through that we, we were able to get that initial funding and sort of um, yeah have that stronger international connection. Fantastic and well done on what you're achieving it's, it's really fantastic to, to see. I'm going to ask you the same question what piece of advice do you wish you'd received um, when you were first considering setting up the, the leaf protein company? Yeah, I think for me, um, something that I've learned probably more recently is that everything does take a lot longer to build than you expect. Um, I think a lot of um, people who do decide to start or found their own companies do that out of the frustration that they can't work on what they really want to and they can't go at the pace that they want to. That was certainly myself. Um, but what I've also come to realize is that even if you do decide to forge your own journey, you can't build everything yourself at the end of the day, and you will need to rely on partnerships and other people, um, whether that's, you know, an organization that you work with or a, the team that you build out. Um, so you're still needing to work with other stakeholders. And um, yeah, things aren't as quick as you think they will be. Um, and also there will be a lot of hurdles because of that. So it's really important, I think, also to build at the same time that team of people that can help you stay resilient through the ups and downs. Um, and can help you keep motivated as well. 
because I think as Max, you said at the start, it, it is a lonely journey being a founder, even if you have co-founders. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and again, wise words. And um, we've had some incredible um, discussion from our founders today and as well as our programs. And I can't encourage you more to, if you're on this call, thinking about setting up a, an ag tech startup to take the plunge. I think, Fern, you're a great example. And you said it well yourself. You know, you've been through multiple programs and you've taken what you, you can from those programs. And it's horses for courses and, and, and trying and testing things. So if you are on the call thinking about taking the plunge, please do. And you certainly don't have to just pick Rocket Cedar or Sparadex or Farmers to Founders. We are very comfortable to see people move between programs. The programs are spaced throughout the year. So um, we all recognize the great work that we are collectively doing. And we're all very passionate about building the agriculture sector here in Victoria, the ag tech sector. So um, there's certainly a lot of opportunity. Thank you to everyone for sharing your insights. Um, I'd like to call out our, in particular, our founders. Daniel, you said get uncomfortable and don't panic. Liam, you said question your assumptions and, and grow your networks. And Fern, you've focused on time. And um, I'm going to flip that and say the time is right. <laughs> uh, if you're thinking about doing it, it takes a long time to start a company. The sooner you get going, the sooner you'll be on that journey. So do take advantage of these programs and ultimately resilience. And my goodness, haven't we all had to learn that in the last couple of years? So great words of wisdom from the founders. I have no doubt that they received that word of wisdom through their interactions with the three programs. I'll say it again, Farmers to Founders, Rocket Seed and Sparatex, three stellar programs that are transforming our ag tech sector here in Victoria. If you're interested in applying for one of these pre-accelerated programs, do head to the websites of the organizations, but you can also jump to launchvic.org where each of the program places, pages can be found. And we'll also be sending out a follow-up email with all of your contact details. Thanks to the LaunchVic team for pulling together today's webinar and a big shout out to the team at Agricultural Victoria for the partnership. We're thoroughly enjoying working with Agricultural Victoria to grow Victoria's ag tech sector. Finally, at LaunchVic, we have a number of events coming up, um, some of which will actually be at Smart Farms in real life. Um, we do hope that you can join us at those events. If you're interested in finding out more and coming along, there will be a follow up email with the details in for those. Thank you again to our guest speakers and thank you for everyone for attending. I hope you've enjoyed it and found this as informative as I have. And we look forward to seeing our, um, our uh, people online at a LaunchVic funded program near you soon. Thanks again. <laughs>